Hi there, my name is Damien and in today's demonstration I'm going to show you how you can unlock protected Excel worksheets or workbooks without knowing the password, all using Power Automate. So I first became aware of this possibility when watching the following video by Layla on YouTube. And in this video she demonstrates that an Excel file is in fact a zip file. And if you convert the file using the, the extension from XLSX to .zip, you can then go and edit the contents, remove the protection and resave the file back as XLSX. But of course this is a manual process and I like Power Automate. So I thought I'd give it a go and see if I can create this using a cloud flow. I also needed a way to zip up the contents of the file. And that's when I discovered the following video by Paul Morana, who's recently demonstrated how you can zip files using one of the Office 365 APIs. So combining these two concepts, I have a demonstration for you today showing how you can remove protection from those worksheets or workbooks all automatically using Power Automate. So here I have an Excel file and this file has the protection already in place. Now if I go into review and I go and try and make some changes you can see here that I'm working in a protected sheet. If I go to unprotect that sheet and I type in what I think is the password it tells me that unfortunately the password I've supplied is not correct. I've done exactly the same here on the following sheet reminding you to subscribe to my channel. Now not only are the worksheets locked but workbooks are locked too and I can't even add a new worksheet to this file. If I try and uh, unprotect the workbook and type in what I think is a password I get the same error message again. So let's close off this Excel file, jump onto Power Automate and put our cloud flow into manual mode waiting for a file to be dragged across onto my document library. So now that my Cloudflow is sitting waiting for a file to be dropped to my document library, I'll jump onto my SharePoint document library and bring across that file that I demonstrated earlier. Now this sheet is, is protected as is the workbook and what the Cloudflow will do is it will take a copy of that file and rename it as a zip. So you can see there in the first action. Then I use the extract folder action which will extract the contents of that whole zip file into a subfolder. And I then use the get files properties only action in order to get the files that, that contain the XML content that I'm looking to remove the protected flags from. Now I do this both on the protected sheets and also the protected workbook flags which is why you'll see the get files twice and also the apply to each uh, action twice because I have to go through these scenarios in order to remove the flags. Now once those flags have been removed I then create a zip file. So you can see from the top here that my flow has run successfully. I note here it's saying that uh, it's still pending but it looks like all the other actions have actually completed. So I'm going to jump back across onto my SharePoint document library. I'm going to jump into my working folder and it's here that you'll see the contents of the zip file that have been extracted and you will also see the zip file that I've created but the final piece of the puzzle is the unprotected copy of the file. So if I go ahead and launch that I will now be able to go and edit the file and I've gone and added a new column I can go into my subscribe tab and again there is absolutely no protection on this file or this worksheet and similarly before when I tried to cl click on the plus tab here in order to create a new sheet within my workbook there are absolutely no restrictions on this copy of the file. If I jump back onto the remove protect folder and relaunch the protected file and try and add a column you'll note that I received the following error message, the sheet is protected, some parts may be view only and can't be changed. So my Cloudflow has removed the protection, how have I achieved it? If I go into edit, I'll quick you, quickly run you through the steps um, and I'll try and put together a blog article at a later date for those that are interested, please make sure you leave your comments below. And so like I explained earlier, I create a copy of the file as a zip file 
I then have this little compose action here that creates me a format date time string that I'm using for the temporary folder path. I extract the contents of this newly created zip file into this temporary path here. And then I get the files that are contained within the XL worksheets folder. And I actually use a filter query to return only files, so where the content type is not equal to folder. Now then, using an apply, apply to each, I traverse through all of the files that have been retrieved from this worksheets folder. And it's probably worthwhile me just quickly jumping into the contents of this file. So here we are, there's the date, time, the action or compose that we've used to create the, the folder and extract the contents of the zip file. We then have the Excel and the worksheets folder. And you'll see why I now use the filter based on the, the folders because I don't want to look at the, the folder here. I just want to look at these two XML files. Back within my flow, I then go through and apply to each where I get the file content of these two XML files. And then using a condition, I check the file content for the words sheet protection. And this is very much the similar process for the workbook protection. The only difference being that the file is in a slightly different path. So again, you'll see I have a condition here checking to see if the file con content contains the workbook protection. So assuming that the file does, I then go and use index of and substring in order to extract the start of the XML prior to that tag for sheet protection. And then I have another expression here to retrieve everything after the end tag of sheet protection. And I bring those two together and I update the existing file that's on that document library. So it's quite a lot to take in some pretty complex uh, expressions potentially which I've built within a single compose but I will um, save those to the description so you can have a look at them uh, in your own time. It's exactly the same process here for the workbook protection. It's exactly the same um, substri substring and index of expressions albeit I've changed the string that I'm looking for. And then the final part of the process is a clever bit that Paul Moran has put together and he actually has a copy and paste method uh, on his blog that allows you to copy this entire scope and create zip files directly from Office 365. So I'm not gonna go into explaining this at all. Go and see his website, tachytelic.net, and it will allow you to ultimately output the unprotected file name uh, of the original file that was triggered using the content of the zip file with the new contents of this folder that we have here. And that is basically how it's built. So it's very much a proof of concept, something I thought I'd give a try, a little challenge, if it's something you're interested in or something you might use yourself. Um, at work, you could potentially have it so that it triggers on when a new file is created. Equally, you could provide it as a service. You could have protected worksheets come in via email and you could turn them around and send them back without the protection. This won't work with encrypted worksheets, but it will work with the basic password protection. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. And as usual, please make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.